I've got a 2001 Land Rover Discovery. I had a tensioner pulley bearing go out, which led to the tensioner bearing shearing off and me having to fix it. So I wanted to share how I fixed it. Uh, I did it for relatively cheap. It was a very easy job. I'd uh, say any, any old person could do it um, with motivated attitude and $17 or so. So um, first things first, this is just a look at the bearing itself. It's inside the pulley. So this is a sealed bearing. You cannot service it or grease it or anything. It comes sealed. The new one comes sealed as well. And when it fails, it it fails so there it is um, when you go to buy the new part you'll have two options you can buy the pulley itself which has the bearing in it as I mentioned but the part is called the tensioner pulley and you can also buy the tensioner and they come together you don't necessarily need the tensioner because your tensioner may be fine it's just a big spring inside a metal housing so I did not buy the uh, tensioner I just bought the pulley it was sixteen dollars I got it from parts geek I'll show you the part number here um, there's a picture of the sheared off pulley inside my engine. Uh, here's a picture of the part number from Parts Geek. I find them to be generally the cheapest parts you can get. Um, Price-wise, tend to be the same things that I get other places um, as far as manufacturers and so forth. And they tend to be pretty reliable and decent on getting things to you. So thought I'd share that part number again. It's sixteen dollars, some change, and shipping. So uh, after I installed it, I ran bit of an endurance test and about eight hours later uh, it was still running fine no chirping no issues at all I haven't had a problem yet so um, highly recommend parts geek I find them to be uh, a good cheap source for parts for replacement Land Rover things that are otherwise very difficult to find couldn't find it at any O'Reilly's or AutoZone or whatever so there's a picture of the installed uh, tensioner pulley um, obviously before you start working on it Disconnect the battery power so that you don't get shocked. Um, <clears throat> this is a lefty-loosey situation like you would expect. Some tensioner pulleys are reverse or left-hand threaded. It's not the case for the Land Rover Discovery, so turn left, it'll come off. It's generally not torqued down too hard. Um, <clears throat> it's fairly straightforward. The only deal is once you get it off, obviously inspect the belt. If it needs replaced, you want to replace it. If it has cracks or looks unevenly worn, uh, if you were hearing a chirping before, there may be another issue, uh, what have you. I did not find any issues with my belt. I didn't plan to replace it, and I haven't. It's been fine. Um, when you put the belt back on after you get the tensioner pulley um, seated, uh, I tend to start from the bottom and make sure the belt is inside the groove of all the auxiliary, um, you know, what have you, the water pump, the power steering pump, the alternator and all that, and kind of work your way up to the top. You'll find the compressor and the alternator at the very top. And I tend to leave the belt off of one of those, put it around the tensioner pulley, push it in, and then pop the belt over the top um, auxiliary pulley. You can do it however you want. There's really not a wrong way. That's just the easiest because otherwise you're laying under the car trying to kind of reach the tensioner pulley and it is very difficult. Um, once you start it up, listen for any squeaks or squalling or whatever. If you have that, you may have an issue. You shouldn't have to set the tension. There's no manual setting. It's just automatic. That little tensioner spring pulls the pulley back and gives the serpentine belt the right tension. So that's it. $16, some change. Uh, probably took 10 minutes. It was very easy. You know, the wife is happy and all is well. Um, so hopefully that was helpful. If not, here's an impression of my dogs. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.